Terry Fontenot continues to cook. Yeah, and this is one of those names. You guys remember we were looking at free agents, and we were saying that, like there were different tiers of like edge rushers. Well, you just added Bud Dupree, one of those names that we dropped. You know, back in February, I think we talked about it, and I think you let the market kind of clear out a little bit. Yeah, you're getting these guys every day. These guys sat out there. Carl got a little less expensive. You got them on a one year deal. You got depth on the defense. I mean, you you really. I, I always use 16 and 17. I don't think you could you could go back to like the 98 team. You had this kind of depth that you've got all over the field. So this is great, and it, again, makes us totally unpredictable, or maybe just maybe that RB that you want, RB1, at eight, holy cow, Bijan. I imagine getting Bijan, we're talking about that on Friday. Well, it, it, we've gotten to a point now with, with the, the moves we've made in the offseason that we can literally take the best player available. Listen, I'm not a believer in it because I just know too many GMs say it just because, but then they're mm-hmm. drafting for need. But we are in that position now, Mike. You literally can take the best corner. You can take the best offensive lineman. If one of these quarterbacks drop and he's high on your board, you got to look at it. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but, you know, listen, crazier things have happened. What if C.J. Stroud all of a sudden ends up there? Right. Because, you know, um, the Texans are not sold and they go defense. And then the Cardinals go offensive line to protect Kyler Murray. And then all of a sudden the Colts, they like, uh, you know, let's just say Anthony Richardson more than they like C.J. Stroud. It's a possibility. And so here's the thing about Bud Dupree. Mike, this is another risk-reward move from Terry Fontenot. I know it's $5 million. I know it's a one-year deal. But you have added more guys who know how to get to the quarterback than we've had on this team. Right. And that is the key. Caden Ellis, Calais Campbell. Now you've added Bud Dupree. The, in, the, the problem with Bud is he's been injured. And all of the hype coming out of college, Mike, and what Bud Dupree was going to be, he comes over from the Titans. Remember, he's with the Steelers. And and I don't know if he's actually lived up to his full potential yet, but this is worth the risk because we haven't had enough guys to get after the quarterback. Right. And look, Bud Dupree, you said it. I mean, the, the story on this guy coming out of college was, you know, tremendous. It looked like he was going to be a guy that might just be a difference maker on that good Steelers team. He can't stay healthy. That, that's kind of been the knock on Bud Dupree. That's kind of like why you get these guys at this stage of their career. You're not breaking the bank. You got a bunch of dudes now. I mean, you look at this list of players. Jesse Bates, you know, Calais Campbell. And obviously Jesse Bates is in the prime of his career. Calais Campbell's at the end of his career. And Bud Dupree is trying to restart his career. But either way, you got, you're adding this to a bunch of young players. See, the biggest thing I'm concerned with, it's, yeah, we hope we get some immediate impact. How is this going to make Ebba Katie and D'Angelo Malone and the dudes that we drafted the last couple of years better? Well, it makes them better because they haven't had anybody to look up to. Calais Campbell's been doing this forever. Bud Dupree's been in the league. Hey, Nellis knows Ryan Nielsen's system. He knows what is going to be expected from him coming over from New Orleans. I think, Mike, more than anything, you get guys who get it, and now I know I can ask questions and maybe I can be coached up a little bit more from guys that have been around it versus Ebicady coming in. Who was he asking last year? Right. Who, who was he looking to and saying, hey, by the way, I have a question? It was just the coaching staff. So I think you need that from the players around you, and it helps We'll see, but you're right. That doesn't mean that the guys we've already drafted shouldn't be getting better. Here's the other part of this. It's Dukes and Bell at Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. With all the resources now that they've spent on the defensive side of the football, do you believe that we're going offense? And, Chris, I want to get a poll up at Dukes and Bell 929 because a lot of people now are saying, okay, look, they needed defense. They went and got a lot of defense. Now, what what resources do you spend on the offensive side of the football? And do you think Arthur Smith, who's an offensive coordinator, guys, he's an offensive guy, is going to sit there and go, look, Terry, you spent all this money. We're good. We got guys. We got depth. Let's go get another talented playmaker on offense. Well, and that's a big 10-4 from Cajun Bow. But, yeah, I just thought that uh, you look back at Tennessee in Nashville and you see, you know, Derrick Henry. Now, a Derrick Henry guy, a caliber player, it grow, does not grow on trees. Now, yeah, production took a hit last year. That's a them problem. Imagine getting a guy like B. John Robinson who can catch the ball out of the backfield, too. You watch him every week at Texas. This dude is – Derrick Henry is a little limited in that department. This guy is a burner, breakaway speed. You, I mean, you're talking about getting potentially more, one of the most electrifying players in football on your team and taking pressure off of Desmond Ritter. Yeah. and I, I mean, it's, it's a good it. – it's a good – how do you think – how do you think Ryan Tannehill rediscovered his career and Derrick Henry toting the mail up there? Yeah, that, Mike, that's the thing about, okay, how good can Desmond Ritter be? And, and here's the other thing, by the way, as we talk about these quarterbacks. I know we want to compare – you know, Ritter was the second quarterback taken off the board. We forget, right? He was – it was Kenny Pickett, and then he got picked in the third round. But, Mike, if we – and we're, we're probably not going to draft one of these quarterbacks – we are in the opportunity to do that again, and if we don't, 
we've got to compare these guys that are coming out this year and what their career arc is going to look like because we chose not to try to take one of these guys. Desmond Ritter, whether we want to do it or not, is going to be compared to these guys because we had a chance to maybe take one of them. We're deciding not to. At least that's what we know right now. And then so, uh, got you know, listen, if any of these guys ball out, if Anthony Richardson turns into a beast, okay, if Will Levis all of a sudden leads his team to the playoffs and we're not in it, people are going to be saying we had a chance to get these guys and we didn't do it. So fair or unfair, that's extra added pressure for Ritter because last year, being the second quarterback taken off the board, Mike, there was no pressure. No, and it's funny because in addition to being compared to you know guys who haven't played a down yet in the NFL, he's going to be compared to whatever Lamar Jackson does this year too. If Lamar Jackson goes to another team or maybe just after all this soap opera he winds up back in Baltimore, there'll be a portion of our fan base that'll be seeing how does Lamar stay healthy? Is Lamar thrown for more touchdowns? Look, I, no one debates his ability. He's an amazing talent, but there have been concerns in the last couple of seasons. So all that's going on. We talked about the tremendous pressure. One thing for certain, when you've looked at these quarterback classes over the last few years, man, it's a 50, it's a crapshoot. It's 50-50. Two of these guys are going to be busts. The odds are it ain't going to be like 83, okay? There's going to be a Todd Blackledge for a John Elway. You know, there's going to be one of those guys that just doesn't pan out. So we'll see. But I, I know that, remember Mitch Trubisky? Remember that conversation? Yeah. yeah. We talked about what, you know, the, the hell the Jets have done this two quarterback drafts in a row. And they've blown it. So. I'm happy with Desmond, but, yeah, you're exactly right. Those comparisons will be inevitable. All right, guys, want to know what you guys think at 404-741-0929. Poll question is up. Uh, with all the defensive pieces brought in this offseason, do you think the Falcons will go uh, offense at number eight? And, again, we're assuming we stay at eight, all right? I mean, obviously, we need to score more points. That's the key, off. <laughs> That's the key. <laughs> so, I mean, this. I mean, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't put the Bijan thing potentially up there with a Mike Vick because that was one where you made a trade to number one, and it just just the fact that you were doing it before the draft it electrified the city. I, I, mean, I told you, Carl. I was in Vegas. We got the news. All the people going bananas, popping champagne. But in this case, this is similar in the sense that this will be a guy that you'll want to go see. Yeah. You know, like you wanted to see Dion in his prime. You want to see Mike Vick in his – a chance to see a guy that, you know – and again, maybe Drake, maybe we create – Ritter's obviously the biggest X factor. How are the Cowboys so good? They had the best running back, the best wide receiver, and, and a solid, if not great, quarterback wound up in the Hall of Fame. Which, yeah, you're absolutely right. And, I know that Troy Aikman never gets the respect, but yeah, I mean, but three Hall of Famers. No doubt. I mean, it's it's a fair assessment. Listen, if I'm a quarterback in this league, it's like it's like – you know, uh, surround me with as much as possible. You, you, do you guys think Jalen Hurts is complaining right now? I mean, seriously. Like, right. the Eagles' plan was, okay, we know you're pretty good, but we're going to give you everything you could possibly ask for, and now you got to go out and do it. He did. If I'm a quarterback, I want to make – I want as many possible uh, – as many talented possible guys around me as I possibly can. That's where I'm at. And I think Desmond Ritter would tell you the same thing. Like, you think Desmond wants bums around? Like – you have to elevate your game so much as a quarterback, Mike, to make guys around you better. The better the players are around you, obviously, it makes your job a lot easier. All right. 